so I want to talk to you about the water pumping system that I've installed in this boat. When I first installed it, uh, I had a diaphragm pump, uh, very common. Uh, lots of people use diaphragm pumps in caravans and uh, motorhomes, things like that, um, because they're self-priming. But the problem with them is, is that they have quite a few parts that can wear. And that's what happened with the uh, diaphragm pump that I had in here, is it wore out. Uh, a washer died, rusted inside it, which was an inferior part. It was a, I was only using fresh water, but it's still, it's still rusted. So I... When it died, I found that, of course, I had no way of pumping out the tanks, and I had it took me forever to clear the tanks using a cup and eventually mopping lots of water. And it took a long time, and I thought, this is not really very good because I'm totally reliant on an electric motor to clear these tanks. So I switched to putting in this um, manual diaphragm pump, which you can see here, this bilge pump, and... Um, and I've just got a centrifugal pump here, which has much higher flow than the old diaphragm pump used to. But the problem is, is that a centrifugal pump like this, even though it's a very simple thing, must be primed. So I prime it with this diaphragm pump, and uh, once it's primed, I can let it do its thing. However, when I first did this, the water coming in went through the diaphragm pump before it went through the centrifugal pump and I've subsequently worked out it needs to be the other way because when the centrifugal pump is after the diaphragm pump it tries to shut the diaphragm so it sucks down on the diaphragm actually closes itself off so I had to force the arm open to keep the diaphragm pump open, it was very difficult to get things to work. When I switched it round so that the centrifugal pump was before the diaphragm pump, it forces the diaphragm open, so it automatically opens the diaphragm to the maximum, and things work very well. The other thing I had to do was remove all air leaks out of the system, because Obviously, if air gets into the system, then the centrifugal pump's going to stop working. It's going to fill with air and stop being primed. So I had to work out how to get all of the all of the potential air leaks out of the system. So this is the revised system now, where I've put hose clamps everywhere, so there's no longer any. Uh, hose pieces which involve clicking over rubber uh, rubber rings. Uh, that whole easy removal clicking over rubber rings thing has been taken out and I'm now just stuck with a permanent system with hose clamps everywhere doing the job. The water goes either in or out through this pipe, which then I just take out of the boat. And I have a, a container down there which I fill with water from the hose and I pump in from that same container. Um, and what I've learned over time is that it is far, far easier to do all this at home and just tow the boat with water in it. So what I'm going to do is prime it using this bilge pump. And once it's primed, I'm going to start the motor, and if we've got a successful prime, you will see the bilge pump arm will 
lift right up and at that point we know that we're we're pumping satisfactorily. So we'll prime it first. You can hear the motor sounds a lot smoother this time round. That's because I'm pumping out and it doesn't have such a head to raise from. In fact, the motor's got virtually no head at all. The motor's at the same level, you might as well say, as the ballast tanks. And I think the motor finds that a lot easier, whereas filling, obviously, on the boats on the trailer and the uh, container that I was sucking from was on the ground, so we're talking about. Um, maybe, maybe it's having to pull. It's having to pull right up over the top and back down into the cabin, which is probably, you know, five feet, which is maybe almost the limit of what the centrifugal pump is able to pull from, which is why it was struggling a bit. But it's certainly pumping out, no problem at all. <laughs> 